Welcome to this episode of Let's Chat. And today I have Jamie Gemmel on, on this with us. Um, Jamie, how, how, how's it going? Uh, fine, and you, Quentin. Thanks for, thanks for having me. All right, cool. I see you've got the, the jacket on and that. It's obviously in Joburg, so things are a little bit fresh. Um, yes, so Jamie, uh, we, we're having a cold winter up here in Joburg. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, Jamie, I just wanted to uh, introduce you, and, and, and you just mentioned now that you've, I was going to introduce you as a, as a brown belt jiu-jitsu jiu athlete, but you said on, on Monday, and I'm sure you're going to share with us now, but on Monday, uh, you got your black belt. So, Jamie is an official um, black belt jiu-jitsu athlete. So, um, yeah, do you want to maybe start off there and just share with, with some of the guys might not quite understand the difference between jiu-jitsu and karate and the, all the other disciplines, um, and then maybe just share with us how long it's taken you to get your black belt. And I know you said that you're one of the highest ranked guys in the country, um, from what I understand. Uh, yes, so um, so hi everyone, I'm, I'm Jamie, I'm, uh, I'm 31 years old, I'm from, from Joburg, and uh, I my sport or hobby or activity, in fact, lifestyle of choice is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, it's a, primarily a grappling martial art, very similar to Judo, but different in that when a fight hits the floor, that's really where our um, speciality comes in and our, our prowess in, in floor fighters. Um, obviously, we don't really deal with strikes in that strikes don't form part of the syllabus or curriculum or, or movements. Okay. But we do cover on how to defend from strikes. So, um, you know, if someone's trying to punch you, how to how to not get hit and then close the distance. And then, you know, once you are like this with someone, it doesn't matter how strong or powerful their punches are. If they can just tap you, you're not going to get uh, get caught out. So it's um it's a very it was I'll I'll go into a bit of the history just now. But it's a it's a primarily a self defense martial art. Um, but with the sports aspect too, and that's where um the rankings and all of that would come in um it's uh the, so yes on monday night after 10 years of of training and and a lot of blood sweat and i think a lot of tears mostly um <laughs> i was awarded my my black belt in brazilian jiu jitsu okay, um cool. unofficially it's it's considered one of the hardest black belts to get in all of martial arts um it's not something you just rock up twice a week for three years and you get a black belt or you have to do any specific type of carters or uh, it's, it's a, it's a lot at most times it's an unknown journey. There's no real um, timeline. Uh, okay. There's a, there's a rough timeline, but uh, on average, it takes the, an average person 10 years to, to get their black belt. Is that full time, Jamie? Um, so for the first, I'd say seven and a half years of my training, it was part-time. Okay. Um, and by, but by part-time I'm saying four five, six times a week on average, sometimes twice a day. Um, I, I really, it, when I say it's my lifestyle, this is my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. It's, uh, it's similar to, uh, I'm an addict, I'm a jujitsu grappling addict. So, um, even though when I was part-time, it may four or five times a week may sound like a lot, but I think anyone can agree when you love something a lot, it's, you know, there's never enough time to do it. Yeah. Um, and then in the last two years, it, it's been, and more specifically in the last sort of year and a bit, it's been full time. Um, and then I'm training, training, not just training, teaching classes, teaching private lessons, teaching kids classes on average six days a week, about seven, eight hours a day. So you so you're doing it full time now. In the beginning, were you doing it? Did you have a day job um, in the beginning? Yes. So up until uh, COVID hit, I was um, I worked in events uh, with the company I worked for. We we organized big sporting events here in Joburg, uh, okay, walk cool. the talk, cycle challenge, etc. Okay. And then when COVID hit, um, obviously big events were were one of the first industries to take a huge knock. Yes. And then I've 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 been an owner of my gym, Gracie Barry Lobo, for the last two and a half years. Um, but I, I've always would just manage to teach morning and nighttime classes. And then I'd go to my day job. Um, okay. But now since the pandemic, I decided to branch out and go full time into jujitsu. So be at the gym full time, take on more classes, start teaching private lessons, something I'd never um, done before. And awesome. yeah, it's, it's probably been the 
the toughest decision to make, but the best and most rewarding decision I've ever had to make. Um, just out of curiosity, how long ago did you make that decision? Um, well, it's always been a dream, but the pandemic kind of expedited it. So it was around about June, July last year, I made the decision. Um, and then I, when we opened up in August was officially when I started full time um, at the gym. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, it's exactly what you were saying. Now I've noticed, although the pandemic brought on a lot of things that people curveballs and all of that, but a lot of guys used that to their advantage, like you did, and basically just pushed you to a, to a thing that you wanted to do in any case, but maybe just gave you that little boot over the edge, um, forced forced the situation, which is pretty cool. So, um, so you are the owner of the gym, and that's in Elova, you say. Yes, te uh, technically it's it's closer to Melrose, um, Melrose here in Johannesburg, uh, just off for anyone from Joburg listening, we're just down the road from the Wanderers Cricket Stadium on Corlett yeah. Drive, um, but we are known as Gracie Barre Lobo. Tell me, uh, just because I actually, I didn't realize this now, now that we're chatting, I actually live just down the road from where your gym is, so you're not upstairs there across the road from Melrose. Yes, that's exactly that's us. Yeah, there. by the KFC. Yeah, yes. above, uh, okay, yeah, that's cool. us. I drive past there every day. Small world. <laughs> yeah, come come visit sometime. That's I, us. I, I definitely will. Yeah. All right, cool. So on the jujitsu side, and that um, you mentioned something that like with with other disciplines, I don't want to mention the names. But with other disciplines, it can be an arrive and achieve situation. So as long as you you know, you arrive for X amount of period, you, you, you'll you achieve and get to the next levels. Um, I didn't realize this with jiu-jitsu, you're saying that it's 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 an unknown, and explain that a little bit, so you, you could, it could take you 12 years, it could take you 10 years, you got, you, you don't know, it's, is that what you're saying? Yeah, so, you know, in, in, in most martial arts, you, <clears throat> you'll train for a period of, I don't know, three, four, five months, uh, once mm -hmm. from your day one, and then they'll they'll give you a grading syllabus. Um, you know, uh, you've got to learn X amount of combinations, X amount of uh, okay. reactions, etc. And then if you do, and then generally there's a there's a, a dedicated practice period where the, the 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 members of the the academy, the gym, the dojo will focus purely on the grading. Okay. Um, so everything else goes out of out of the picture, and then the grading comes, and then it's pretty much like can you. Uh, reproduce everything you've been practicing um, for this specific grading and most times nine times out of ten people do and then they receive their belt and they move on this is why in certain martial arts you'll see kids at 12 13 have black belts yes. um, and it's it's purely because they have just attended enough classes and, and done enough lessons Okay. Um, a, a 13 year old, you will never see. In fact, in jujitsu, no one can get their black belt below 18. And okay. even then, it, it, the youngsters that get their black belt are high level competitors that have chosen this as their lifestyle from the age of 10, 11, 12, that this is what they want to do. And they, okay. they, we, we call them mat rats. They live on the mats and, <laughs> and they just train all day. Um, okay. So in jujitsu, when you're going for your graining, Generally, the first grading will happen in about a year. So from your day one till a year later, you'll, you'll then grade for your blue belt. And as coaches and instructors, we look for specific things. Do you understand the movements and why we do the movements? Not just can you reproduce this move, but why are you moving that way? What is the point of moving this way? Why wouldn't you move the other way, et cetera? Um, okay. And then from then on, there is a, a guideline on times. But for example... Uh, I spent four years at brown belt, um, but I got my blue belt in eight months. So I didn't, I, I spent longer at certain belts and shorter at others. Um, and it's one of the things like, like getting my black belt on Monday, there was, there was no warning. There was no uh, pre, pre knowledge of it happening. There was nothing I had to prep for, nothing I had to do. And um, jujitsu's mindset compared to some of the other martial arts is, it's not how well you can do on the day that determines if you are a black belt. Um, you know, what happens if I'm going for my grading and I've had some, you know, I've had personal problems and my mind's just not there and I just can't perform on that day in that maybe hour, half period 
that mean I'm not a black belt? So jujitsu rather looks at your time spent at the previous belt holistically, um, and that gives you your grade. Sorry, Jamie, I, I, I just want to, I just want to, can you maybe just repeat that because I think your signal was down there, so you froze a little bit. But do you want to maybe? Uh, no worries. Just repeat that again, so because that's a very important thing that you. May, I know exactly what you, where you were going. So you were saying about the mindset. And you're saying that it's not about just being on form that specific day. Great. You can do X, Y, and Z, but can you do yes. it when I catch you off guard? Can you do it? Is that just explain uh, that? to uh, us? Again? Yes. So, you know, we, we, we look at it as um, we don't judge the person grading on the day that, you know, could you do everything flawlessly on the day, et cetera. We don't have any of that. Whereas, you know, you go to another martial art and maybe on the day, you, it could be something as stupid as you stubbed your toe in the morning and that threw your whole mind off and you didn't perform that day uh, and then you don't get the belt. That doesn't mean you're not a black belt or whatever belt you're trying to go for. Um, whereas in jiu-jitsu, we look at your whole time spent at the previous belt holistically. So okay. did you come to class co continuously? Were you a good person? Did you help those lower than you? Because as you get closer to black belt, it's not just about the technique. It's about the person and and your, your, your mindset and your attitude towards the sport and, and not just the sport, but your gym and the people in and around that you see every day. Okay, that's awesome. I didn't, I didn't know that. So that's, that's pretty cool. So that brings us to the mindset side of things and that, and, and clearly that's like any or most sports, it is very important. Do you want to maybe just share with us when you speak about mindset, what is it that you, what, like, What's important for, for jiu-jitsu as when it comes to mindset? What, what do you guys do? Is there any specific training that you do? Or when you speak about mindset, what is it that you're referring to? Because it's quite a broad topic. Yes, yeah, so, uh, and, and that's a nice question. Um, so when I say mindset, in, in jiu-jitsu, you know, obviously, and in any sport or martial art, but, um, you know, you get people that are gifted and talented and naturally uh, maybe more athletic, faster, stronger, more flexible you know whatever but yeah. in jiu-jitsu the, the jiu-jitsu was designed um, and it was created by a gentleman who he adapted from judo and judo was very strength and power power based and it, original judo and it it, it sort of uh, was more easy to advance for people who were athletically gifted and talented etc and it, it jiu-jitsu was then created more that it doesn't matter how big fat whatever skin color oh, religion whatever. sexual orientation it doesn't matter if you just are consistent and you can just dedicate two three hours a week to start and as you go but if you can just be and i, I love the phrase consistently consistent everything else takes care of itself and that's not just something at, at at the gym it can be everything on the mat off the mat but if you just when it's when you know when you're feeling bad you show up when you're feeling good you show up when you're happy you show up when you're sad you show up when you've had a good day the day before you show up the next day when you've had a bad day that you know and it's and a lot of people we find you know it, th this is something jujitsu actually gives them as they go along it, it it gives them a mindset as well because there's no rushing it you can't go away for three months and sit in a dark room and you know drill with the shadows you have to show up at the gym consistently every other day or as much as your lifestyle um, affords you to but it will give you that mindset as opposed to, you know, something else where you can just say, well, if I just bite down and fuss bait for three months, I'll be fine. This yeah. isn't that. This is, this is years and years of training of, exactly. It's a journey. That's awesome. I, I've actually got, I can't see here, but I, it's quite often I got goosebumps or whatever from, just from what you shared, because what we do with the mindset training is exactly what you've just said now is that it's a consistency and it's a daily thing. Um, same as same as mindset you can't go to a training course on saturday and now expect that your whole life's going to change because your mindset now has changed no it's it's a daily yeah. thing and the consistency is so so important with anything which is pretty cool that um so you mentioned something very important there you said what what the, um the consistency in consistency what was it consistently consistent consistently consistent that's awesome so i think it's tony robbins he actually speaks about this as well and he mentions that uh 90 percent of your results is just showing up and I yes 100 percent. you so do you want to maybe just explain to us is so a similar similar thing then on the jujitsu side is that it's arriving yeah. and, and being there 
yes, there's an old sort of adage in jiu-jitsu that a black belt is a white belt who never quit. And that's all it is. Exactly. It's all it is. It's it's just showing up. You know, I've I've had over the years um, students, friends, people come to me, uh, even even on Monday, like, man, you got your black belt. I can't wait to be like you. How do I be like you? How do I get to your level? And I just say, one, you don't want to be like me, but two, just show up. I'm not. I've I've never been the fittest, strongest, uh, most dedicated. I mean, not not sorry. I have been the most dedicated, but never been the fittest, strongest, fastest, anything than that. I've got no special talents. I'm not flexible. I can't backflip nothing, but all I, all I ever did was just show up and that, and it's, I think a lot of people want to hear that, that, like you say, they want to go to a Saturday course and they want to hear, you know, this is the magic key. The, just pay your the 50. Secret? What's the secret? Yeah. Give me exactly, the secret so you know, I can just take that and go. <laughs> pay this money and then I'll reward you with the secret of how to get everything. No, it's not. It's, it's really as mundane and bland and boring as just keep showing up. And it's, it's something that when you see people start to get it, they're like, when, when you do get it, it's a far more powerful um, ideal or idea than, yeah. than what it sounds like. It's greater than the sum of its parts, you know? Um, yeah. And I think everyone can relate to like those days where whatever your workout or, or thing that you have to do that, you know, I, I don't want to read this chapter or I don't want to uh, go for that run or I don't want to go for that, whatever, that after you do it, you feel so much better. And it's, and that's where the reward comes comes in for being consistent so you don't just go train when you're happy and you you're feeling good you go in when you're feeling bad as well and that little endorphin kick you get afterwards rewards you for being consistent yeah, at so least I in think, my view yeah i know that's it's, it's so it's so spot on and, and the similarities to what you're saying um and what we do with the mindset stuff and what it was is it, there's so much um synergy in that uh because also uh i think it's david goggins also that says that at the end of the day, the, the day or when you don't feel like doing the run or whatever it is, that's when, that's the most important day that you should do the run is the when you don't 100%. feel like um, it. Yes. I, I think it's the same with the mindset thing. And that also is, is that, uh, you know, if you've got that, that habit, it makes it a lot easier to follow through on the days when you don't feel like it, when it's cold and it's this or whatever, because you're in such a mindset and habit of doing it that it's second nature. It's still difficult. Um, and you, you know it's it's something I see quite quite funny like sometimes like now with winter it's very very cold and um you know the mats are, are quite cold and I'll have guys standing in their geese in their you know literally we're two minutes away from starting going Whew, I, uh, I I wish I was in bed nice and warm and I'm looking <laughs> at them I'm like but you're standing on the mat so even though your your mind is 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 consciously telling you shit I don't want to be here I want to be at home um, it's cold. I want to be in bed, which we all want to do. No one wants yeah. to be on the mats at six in the morning. It's freezing or at, or running or cycling. But the fact that you subconsciously, you hear your body subconsciously told you it overrid the, the, the mindset of negativity of, I don't want to be here. I, I want to be at home. It overrid, it overrode that yeah. to bring you to the gym. So even though you're moaning and complaining about the cold, looking at me in the face, you're still about to train. And that's when I know that the mindset is, has sort of sunk in on some people it's not at the surface yet but they complain fuck it's cold oh, excuse my language but it's cold i'm injured i broke up with my girlfriend my cat attacked me blah 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 they're saying all these things but they're not saying it from their cold warm bed i mean their warm bed etc they're saying it's freezing cold shivering on the mats so that's when i know this person this person gets it but they don't get that they've got it yet if that makes yeah. sense well that that's that's awesome yeah I, I never actually looked at it like that so yeah, they, they've they their subconscious has overridden their conscious because the consciously they want to be in bed and somewhere nice and warm and cozy and toasty, but the subconscious has got them to, and and we speak so much about the subconscious and that because the subconscious is the autopilot, that's the one yes. that, that makes you do things and you're like shit, why am I probably like that? Why am I standing here? I could be in a warm yeah. bed, but you're there, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah you're there. Yeah, and those are the never dudes that. Like that that tick off at the end of the month, they've done far more sessions than if they've, than some of them have even actively thought of, you know, and that's, that's how you get good at anything is yeah. when you, you don't feel like doing it, but you, you know, you're sitting there tight. And I think David Goggins, had, you know, he says sometimes he stares at his shoes for half an hour before he even puts them on. And he has that internal battle. 
But the you fact know. that he hasn't got up or whatever the thing you're dealing with, you know, you haven't left the room, you haven't not got in your car, maybe you're swearing to, to all that's holy in the world driving there, but you're still driving to the session. And that's when it starts kicking in. And then you sort of have an awakening later on where you're like, well, I just have kept rocking up this whole time. So I may as well just keep rocking up yeah. because it's what I'm used to. And then it becomes even more of a second nature where you, you I, cause you know, you're like, I know when I've, I've been cold before, but I've been here. I've, I've been sad before, but I've been here. So I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. I think, I think also that that's where the, where the growth happens as well. Um, is when you're in that mindset to whatever, that's where the growth just continues to happen. And, and I speak about this quite often as well, that growth or change doesn't always happen the same way. Sometimes you can change just like this. Sometimes it's a gradual and sometimes you don't notice it. Um, and sometimes it just takes long and that's the hard change. That's the one that, uh, you know, the, the one that we don't like because we all like the instant gratification. You know, I want a six pack. Exactly. I want it now. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to work yes. with abs for the next 12 to 18 months. I want a But the funny thing can... is people will work for it. They just, they've got this mindset, like you've just said that, well, if I can't have it now, then I don't want it. But then yeah. they'll go on it. You know, they'll find whatever their topic of choice is, whether it's reading more books or playing more chess, whatever it is. And they just begrudgingly start. And then 12 months later, they've got the six pack or they've read the 20 books and it feels like they've just done it now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the, that, that whole instant Instagram like sort of generation where, you know, it's like post a picture, I need all the likes. It's, 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 I think it's making people who they, they forget that it, it takes hard work. You know, hard work works for a reason. Yeah. You know, you can go to any of these, look at all these guys like The Rock. The Rock hasn't become the most popular dude in the world because he chills, because he works bloody hard, you know? Yeah. And anyone can be like that, but everyone looks at The Rock thinking, oh, I'll never be this six foot, whatever, whatever. You won't if you just keep looking at your phone at yeah. the dude. You got to go into the gym and you'll never be The Rock, but you'll be your own rock, you know? Yes. So there's a, it reminds me of a saying where the guys are like, um, overnight success does happen um, but overnight, that's taken 10 years. So yes, I'm yes. Not, not success, but it's taken 10 years. 10 years, exactly, um, exactly. Quite often, that's what happens. There's a story about the Japanese, uh, the Chinese bamboo tree. I always like sharing with uh, about Les Brown, and I'm not going to share the whole thing yet, but basically it talks about this tree that takes five years. It doesn't even break ground. Five years, you've got to water, fertilize, nothing. And then all of a sudden, when it does shoot, it shoots 60, 70 feet in a few weeks. Yes. Um, so yeah. sometimes that growth happens like that, where you just like, you don't see anything. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you, so do you guys compete in that? Do you actually have competitions? Is it, is it similar to? Yes. Yeah, so jujitsu, jiu jujitsu, not just locally, but worldwide is booming in popularity. And um, it's, there, there's always been a competition scene in jujitsu locally, but it's really picking up now. We had one a couple of weeks back, um, or I won't give the exact date, but it was, we had over 300 people competing in a local jujitsu tournament on a Saturday morning. It was, in fact, wow. it was over two days. Um, Where was that? And uh, it was in beginning, it was sort of beginning of the year. Um, and right. just, um, and it was, it was the biggest, so I also sit and I'm part of the uh, jujitsu federation and, and uh, one of the members of the board. Okay. And we, we hosted the first competition in over a year and we had uh, th over 300 entrants. We had about a hundred kids entered alone, just, just wow. kids from, from about seven till 15, 16. Uh, we had, I think it was over 30 uh, women and ladies entered. And I mean, that's just, it, it was over two days. And okay. I mean, I remember days where there were 10 people competing for, you know, just, uh, and it was over an hour. And it's really grown up. So um, a lot of the gyms here, so jujitsu, sorry, I should clarify. It's broken down into three sort of separate things, very rudimentary. You've got obviously the fitness side of things, which comes with training, any type of training. Yes. Then you have the self-defense angle, which teaches you, you know, how to defend the punches, close the distance, look after yourself, uh, and then be able to control a potential attacker. Um, and then that this also has subdivisions of bully proof for kids and then um, anti-rape self-defense things because jiu-jitsu is one of the few martial arts in fact the only real martial art where you you're able to attack 
and be quite dangerous from your back. So uh, it's quite obvious how it can help in, um, you know, you can use chokes and different types uh, of submissions okay. to subdue your opponent off your back. Okay. And then what, Jamie, I don't, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me, but you, we lost you. We lose you. Uh, Uh, you you frozen on our side, yeah, um, and you've uh, there we lost you. Uh, Quentin, there I can hear you now, sort of again. There, sorry, little uh, technical You're... difficulties, but um, I'm back. No, that's fine. Um, otherwise, I don't know if can you want to see. Make... No, I can't see your videos off. But maybe if if you're having if you're having connectivity issues, you can maybe just leave your your um, video off just for the last few minutes. Okay, cool. Let me do that. Um, there we go. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Because I find quite often if you stop the video, then then it actually um, um, gives you better. It, it works a bit better. Yeah. Um. So I'll just I'll just finish what I was saying there in the okay. in the three different things. So. You get the self-defense, the fitness side, and then the, the side that the, the angle that most people pursue it for, which is the fun side, is the sports and competition side. Okay. So in, in, that ang in, the, in that sort of aspect, we do moves that you wouldn't necessarily want to do in a self-defense situation on the streets, if you know what I mean. Yes. Um, and yeah, we compete. I, I've been competing pretty much since, um, since I started 10, 10 years ago, and I'll continue to, to compete until... I'm not able to anymore. Yes. No, that's awesome. All right, cool. That that sort of brings us to the end. I think uh, the, the timing of your connectivity issues was perfect because... <laughs> sort of, Spot on. Uh, yeah, we're at the end in that. But again, thank you so much for your time. It's awesome. I'm definitely going to be popping in there very soon. Um, and yes, please. To you in that. But um, yeah, I wanted to thank you for the time. You've shared some awesome um, things there again. Uh, what I wanted to ask you is how do you, how do people connect with you or what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, okay. So uh, firstly, um, I, I, I teach and train out of Gracie Barre Lobo. Um, you can catch us uh, our website, which has got all the information about the gym, all the trainers and the location, which is www.gracieborough.co.za. Okay, cool. um, and then uh, you can follow us at Gracie Barre Lovo on Instagram and Facebook. Cool. Um, and then if you want to follow me for whatever reason, you can catch me at I am James Boston on Instagram. Um, that's where I share most of my, my stuff. All right. That's awesome. So just uh, um, people might not have caught all of that, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put all of um, James's um, handles and, and um, websites and everything at the bottom of this YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, um, you can find all the details there and connect with James that way. And then, yeah, James, thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time. Um, if you guys are watching this, remember to subscribe to this channel. Um, it'll notify you on any new interviews that I do or any new content that comes up. And then, James, thank you so much. Awesome having you on here. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Ciao.